12, Sunday after Pentecost. This morning's service follows the Divine Service 1. It begins on page 15 in the worship supplement. Uh, the entire service is taken from the supplement with the exception of our opening hymn, which is found in the Red Hymnal. So we'll begin our service after the, can uh, the ring of the bells and then join us sing our opening hymn, um, the one posted.
For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner.
because it is better to be told, come up here, than for you to be humiliated before a ruler. This ends the Old Testament lesson. This morning our psalm is number 40, which we find on page 45 in the front of the supplement. We'll sing the verses and the refrain to psalm number 40. you are committing a sin 
since you are convicted by this law as transgressors. In fact, whoever keeps the whole law but stumbles in one point has become guilty of breaking all of it. For no one who said, do not, or for the one who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not commit murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do commit murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law of freedom. For there will be judgment without mercy on the one who has not shown mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. This ends the epistle lesson. Alleluia. Your words became a joy to me and the delight of my heart. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel is taken from St. Luke in the 14th chapter, beginning with the first verse. <laughs>
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. First sermon today, we turn our attention again to the Gospel of Luke in chapter 14. Yes, everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. This is the Word of God. Please be seated. Dear friends in Jesus Christ, our Lord, do you like to be different? Do you march to the beat of your own drummer? Some people do. Some people want to look different and stand out from the crowd. Nothing wrong with that, I suppose. And in their efforts to do this, they may color their hair bright green. They may have pieces of metal hanging off their bodies in places nobody would have expected. They may even go so far as to grow their hair long enough to put it in a ball on the top of their head. Just to be different. There are other people who would never think to do that. They would never think of coloring their hair even one of the normal colors that hair is found. They barely wear earrings if they're ladies and little tiny things not to draw attention to themselves. And they would certainly not behave in such a way as to get noticed. They don't like to be considered different. They're much happier if they can just blend in with everyone else. But dear friends, as Christians, I would submit to you today that every one of us is different. No matter the color of our hair, natural, gone, or green, no matter how we dress or what we look like or what our favorite music or food is, we are different from the world around us. At least our Lord would have us be different from the world around us. And that's what our lessons today focused on. That difference that the Christian is to be in his or her world. And this morning we see that it's in, evident in many ways. This morning we see it just in one way. And that is that God enjoins us as Christians to put others first. Not something common, but to put others first. That's going to be different. That's going to make us different when we do it. Now that won't be easy. But in doing so, we reflect the attitude and the actions of our Savior himself. It isn't easy to put others first. That doesn't come naturally to most people. When we do that, we might be thinking to ourselves, well, how am I ever going to get what I want if I'm always thinking of my spouse, my children, my parents, my siblings, or whomever it is? Little children, when they're beginning to develop and gather some things from their surroundings and pay attention to life, they'll start to crawl and then eventually they'll start to talk. And one of the first words children say, and parents, your child may have been different if they were. Congratulations, you've done something quite remarkable. But children often will have one of the first words out of their mouth be mine or my as in my toy, my whatever. And they'll punctuate that statement with a glaring look at that little kid who's trying to take that toy and play with it themselves. And then as we grow older, our human nature always identifies the three people it loves the most. Me, myself, and I. And that's just the way it is. By nature, humans are self-centered creatures. And the world that we live in doesn't make it any easier not to be. The world emphasizes a mentality of looking out for number one. The world holds up on a pedestal individuals who have achieved greatness. And if along the way they had to step on a few other people, well, you know, that's the price you got to pay for greatness. And if they didn't really put others first, well, that's all right. They were seeking a loftier goal. 
so we'll excuse their behavior. At least the world does. And perhaps the most difficult reason to put other people first ahead of ourselves is who those people are. Put other people first, really? Put my neighbor ahead of me. Pastor, do you know who my neighbor is? Have you seen the things my neighbor does? You should hear what my neighbor says. You should see the way my neighbor treats their children. You should see the kinds of things that I hear my neighbor say when the windows are open. Oh, 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 Pastor, I'm not going to put him first. I stay as far away from that person as I possibly can. And I would certainly never put them first. I'm supposed to put the person first who just cut me off in traffic? Uh, I had words for him. They weren't nice words, Pastor, but I'm certainly not going to put him first. He apparently thinks he's important. At least, he's, somebody thinks he's important. I'm supposed to put him first? The, the little kid? The classmate who just cut in front of me in the lunch line? I'm supposed to put them first? And, and you know, the list could go on and on. We, we know what we're dealing with here, don't we? Even those closest to us sometimes are hard to put first because we know what they're like in their worst moments. It's hard to put my kids first as I'm raising them. It's hard to put my spouse ahead of me sometimes. I mean, yeah, sometimes I can. Okay, it's, it's my wife's birthday. I'll treat her nice. I'll take her out for dinner. I'll buy her a bunch of gifts. But the next day, eh, business as usual. That's a big day for the kids. It's their graduation. They're going to get a lot of cards. They're going to get a lot of gifts. They'll be the center of attention. And I'll be willing to put up with that for a day or two or, you know, a couple of days after that. But, but uh, not all the time. I'm going to start thinking about myself eventually. The Lord Jesus tells us that the person who humbles themselves will be exalted. The person who exalts themselves will be humbled. And we've all known people who have exalted themselves. In school, they were considered to be arrogant. They were perhaps considered bullies. They thought that their, the world revolved around them. And they thought their world did, and therefore everybody else's ought to as well. And then those people weren't pleasant to be around. But they grew up, and in some cases grew out of that, but in other cases not so much. We may know adults who think too, the entire world revolves around everything they're doing. And aren't they the gift that God gave to humanity? Of course they're not, but they don't know that. The Lord tells us to put them first. And as we look across the history of the world, and we see that there were times when people have done some of that. There have been plenty of evidences and examples in the world's history, perhaps even in our own lives, of us thinking of someone else first. Jesus doesn't tell us to do that most of the time, half the time. He says to do that all the time. And then we realize that the number of people who have done that, that, that list has gotten quite short. In fact, there's only one name on it, and that would be the name of Jesus himself who did just what he tells us to do. His attitude was always one of putting other people first. As we read the Gospels, we, we run into those accounts where Jesus was busy healing people and, and feeding people and preaching and so forth, and he was tired, and then more people came to him, and he didn't turn them away. He said, well, okay, I need to help them too. His attitude was always one of putting someone else before himself. And that was borne out not only with his attitude, but in his actions. As the crowds came to him, he didn't turn them away. He didn't look at his wrist-worn sand dial and say, time's up. Office hours are closed now. No, whenever they came, wherever they came to him, he would help them. And I suppose there is no greater evidence of that than Jesus himself leaving heaven and coming to earth. Leaving paradise to come and live in a broken world where he witnessed on a daily basis the effects of sin in the lives of his creatures, where he saw the hatred and experienced it firsthand, where he heard people gossip about others and then gossip about him, 
where he observed jealousy between his disciples and then observed jealousy directed at him. And then he did all of that because he had a purpose. He didn't come to heal the sick because not everyone was sick. He didn't come to feed the hungry because not everyone needed feeding. He didn't come to cure blindness or deafness because not everyone was blind or deaf. He came to address sin and to bring salvation because everyone is a sinner and everyone is in need of salvation. And so with that attitude and with that goal in mind, he humbled himself, as Paul says in his letter to the Philippians. He humbled himself so much that he willingly died so that we would be exalted to the place of heaven. And that's what he tells us in our text. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The individual who recognizes his or her sins, who confesses those sins and their, their deep need for Jesus, that man or woman, no matter what they achieve here on earth, no matter how popular or unpopular, no matter how wealthy or poor, that person will be exalted to a glorious position in the kingdom of God. Conversely, the individual who is so full of themselves that they never think they even need a savior, they will be humbled with a humility that will last forever in torment and misery. And so the Lord Jesus calls us to recognize other people for who they are. His creatures who deserve his love as much as we do and who deserve our love. He calls upon us to recognize who we are, his creatures, who deserve his love as much as everyone else, which would be, of course, not at all, but yet have received that love to such a great degree that we're going to heaven. And when we recognize that, that is our motivation. That gives us the ability to put others first. I cannot put my wife, my children, or anyone else above me because I have mastered the art, because I'm by nature a great guy, because I have found some little secret somewhere that most haven't that allows me to live that way. No, I can only put anyone ahead of myself, friend, family member, or complete stranger, when I dwell on the fact that Jesus Christ put me before himself. And he did it not once, not twice. He did it from eternity. He did it in time. And that makes an eternal difference for me and for you. Because like me, he put you before himself. From eternity, in time, for eternity. And so, dear friends, that's where we find our ability to do what our Lord tells us to do, to do what James urged his audience, to do what Solomon wrote about in the book of Proverbs, to think of others more than we think of ourselves, to put others first. Not necessarily because it comes easily, not because the world gives us any support in doing it, not even because they're great and wonderful people, but because our Lord Jesus put us before himself. And because of that, we have heaven to look forward to. Because of that, we are different. Because he was different. And he wants us to live differently throughout our lifetime. Because that's going to make a difference, not just for us, but for someone else too. Because someone's going to ask us, how can you be the way you are? And you don't tell them, well, my parents brought me up right. No, you don't tell them, well, because I'm blessed to be so much better than most people. No. We tell them, because I have a Savior who did so much for me, who put me first, that I can therefore put you first, whomever you might be. Whatever you have done to me, whatever you have said. It won't be easy. It won't be simple. It will certainly be different. And after all, dear fellow Christians, we're about as different as you can get. Amen. Please rise.
And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.